And good Wednesday morning, South Louisiana and Southwest Louisiana. We'll take a look. Uh, this is your red eye update. 1:47 a.m. 1:48 a.m. right now, and I wanted to put this out there uh, before I had head to bed. We're gonna take a look at the uh, radar synopsis first. And then I'll show you the uh, risk areas that came out for today for the, the outline uh, the risk for Thursday, New Year's Eve. So as I put this in motion here, pay attention over here uh, in West Texas. And you see, there's your low. And you'll see the radar returns you've got that spin right in here so we'll put this in a motion right now and let it update real quick and then it'll put it into motion here once it goes through the we've got a four hour loop running here so you see this stuff here is ejecting to the northeast and this is coming down to the southeast so you got a convergence right there but you see right in here everything's you've got that rotation there you clearly see it on radar and what's going to happen is as the trough digs down further it's going to push this low down here and then it's going to come up and eject up here somewhere in this vicinity before it shoots off to the northeast and that's going to set the stage as I put in the dew point fill and we'll overlay that with the radar right now but what I want you to see whoop sorry about that <coughs> We'll slide slide down here, and you can see mid 60s dew points still offshore, but they are working inland. Uh, and you can see the greens here, and these lighter lime greens. There's your high dew points. That's going to continue to work in uh, from the Gulf, and the reason for that is. You've got this upper, upper, upper level low right here that's spinning and it's, it's going to suck all this moisture inland. And as this low works in and gets closer, gets further east, the strengthening of that uh, low be become a closed low. And then you're going to start to see these mid to upper 60 dew points uh, moisture spread work well inland and you'll see where the 50s are right now in dew points once this works in you'll see those mid 60 dew points so that's that's going to set the stage for warm moist air for, for Thursday tomorrow well tomorrow yeah it is tomorrow now so technically so uh, when you stay up past midnight you kind of well get your days and nights mixed up. So typically I'm a night owl, but I got things to do tomorrow. So uh, well today, and uh, trying to get things battened down and getting ready for this event on Thursday. Um, we'll take away this right now, and we'll turn radar off. And what I want to do is. I'm going to switch over to the NAM 3K and let's get in here to well you see the line at 60 hours out so let us go into tomorrow morning that would be 7 a.m. tomorrow morning so you see this developing and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and play a loop here and we'll start it 
let's start it at midnight tonight, okay? Let, let's just do that. And we'll go through um, midnight tonight, New Year's Eve morning, uh, all the way through New Year's Day at 6 a.m. And we're going to let this loop load. It'll take it a minute or so, and you'll see different radar uh, returns. This is future radar. And as uh, the software here puts this in the motion and puts all these frames together, uh, you'll get a better sense of, of where that, that closed low, upper low at, is at. And you'll start to see uh, the broader picture of things and what we're likely to expect. So again and, and while I'm thinking about it let's go to p-typing here I should have done that to begin with some of you were, were messaging me privately on the page uh, talking about that snow there in central Texas and that wintery mix and your weather apps were saying that we were going to get snow here in South Louisiana. I'm going to repeat. No snow. Repeat that with me now. No snow. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we'll give this uh, just a couple of minutes. Bear with me, folks. It takes a couple of minutes to get this all these frames because I have it set to where I have a lot of uh, frames to get a smoother animation and then I'm gonna start picking out things and we'll give you a uh, a look at what possibly is in store as we move forward into uh, in the Thursday morning and then on in the New Year's Day so and the problem being is that that closed low is going to take its time and kind of meander a little bit across Central Texas and then on up into Northeast Texas now where that low actually sets up at will be dependent on if our risk gets upgraded to an enhanced. And as of the midnight up 1 a.m. update from the Storm Prediction Center, or 2 a.m., whatever it was there, no, it was 1 a.m., uh, they maintain a slight risk. It looked like they, uh, and I'm going to show you that, uh, it did look like they extended it a bit further to the southeast uh, into the Houston metro uh, area there. Uh, and my daughter was asking me uh, if they were going to be rocking and rolling New Year's night. And she didn't want to have to put up with uh, everybody popping fireworks till 6 o'clock in the morning. So... Uh, this is going to be out of out of Houston and Katy, Texas, uh, well before midnight, my dear. So as this gets put into motion here, you see that low is ejecting this line. Whoa. Across Louisiana. You see the progression of that. And... We'll take a zoom in here, and let's take the tessellation off. God dang it. There we go. So this will be midnight. It's now officially Wednesday. So midnight tonight through 6 a.m. New Year's Day. And this is, I'm going to stop this, and... 
let's see how this is going to progress here. So now we're in the New Year's Day, and already this stuff is moving in across the border parishes and counties of Louisiana and Texas here. So, and the problem I have with this is, you see how ragged this little line is, and it, and it looks like kind of like a QLCS. <coughs> But these rogue independent cells uh, are going to be the problem. And let's advance this. And you see it pulses, and you've still got these little clusters in here. And anywhere in here, you're likely to get some wind damage and tornadic activity. So we'll advance this again, and you can see uh, close to 5 o'clock where this thing is setting up at uh, tomorrow afternoon. So basically getting Jennings is just about out, out, of, out of the danger at that point. Uh, approaching Crowley and Eunice, Bill Platt. You can see uh, the towns here. And now this timing may be off, give or take a couple or a few hours. But things have been fairly consistent and fairly agreeable with the models. And so timing is is getting narrow down here and I'm gonna say within you know two hours either side of this uh, is how we're likely to see this play out so at this point we're approaching dusk and getting close to dark now we, we, what we don't see right now is anything well outside or well east of this line that's a good sign so we see it pulse, and then you, you see this kind of quickly move uh, through New Roads, down to Morgan City, to Pierre Park, uh, approaching Baton Rouge uh, right at the 7 o'clock hour. So it's only moving at about 20 miles per hour. But what we do have now is you have these little individual rogue cells out here those could become tornadic now let's continue this and then you see uh, getting close to eight o'clock it's moving through Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, Walker, Slaughter, uh, Baker up through Jackson down to Gonzales, Donaldsonville uh, Clearing Pierre Park, approaching uh, Thibodeau, Gray, Homa, and again you see these little individual rogue cells out ahead of this, and even down here on the bottom of this line. Uh, damaging wind threat and a tornado threat. The threat is pretty real. Uh, it's very real. Uh, not to say that. You know, we're actually going to see something, but the conditions, the ingredients are all there and in, in place uh, for this to pop off. Um, at this stage of the game, at this time frame on the future radar, it's a, you can almost take it to the bank. You're going to be under a tornado watch. And I'm willing to bet we're going to see multiple tornado warnings uh, along this as, as with these rotating storms. Now, whether, you know, Mezzo actually drops one, that remains to be seen. But there's going to be a lot of rotation involved. It'll be surface-based, and it's a very dangerous scenario. And... 
all we can do at this point is keep our fingers crossed, pray that we get through this with minimal issues. But I need everybody to be on their highest alert, have your plan in place, have multiple ways to get warnings and weather alerts uh, in addition to what I post on the page and through the two groups. Um, if you're in the Southeast Louisiana Storm Spotter Group, make sure that uh, you can get, you set the notifications for admins, I think only admins posting uh, or moderator something to that effect ensure that you have that checked off because the way the Facebook algorithm works uh, for groups is you typically get those notifications very quickly so make sure that uh, you, you know I'm on the Chris account that is me uh, Zuckerberg don't know that, but he probably will because they have voice recognition, so uh, screw him. I got, what, 13 more days in Facebook jail, but, you know, this is my way of being able to continue to do this, and, you know, th this is, you know, life-threatening information, life potentially life-saving information on a potentially life-threatening event. So let's advance this forward now. We'll go into uh, the 9 o'clock hour. And you see all that big flare-up. Now, again, you see these, these clusters, these little small clusters. These tend to be supercellular and be rotating. New Orleans, you're not out of woods by any means. So uh, this is still a, a dangerous scenario. And any one of these rogues could drop a tornado. You know, will they? Crystal Bob isn't that accurate. And so we'll push this forward again here, and you can still see, you know, we've got some action now. New Orleans is under the gun around 10 o'clock. Uh, Still getting some action in Hammond, Killian, uh, along the I-55 corridor, and then along the uh, state line there uh, from Slido up to Bugaloosa, Varnado, Angie, Columbia, Bassfield, and down here all the way through Bell Chase, Jean Lafitte, Galliano, Gold Meadow, uh, Homa, La Rose, uh, Chauvin, Matthews, Desalmans, where my buddy Chris is at. And Boutte, uh, you see some action there around Laplace. So let's move this forward a little bit more. And then you see it, it kind of looks like it slows down a bit. And, you know, now we're looking 11 o'clock. It's just starting in two hours. It's finally starting to ease its way out of the New Orleans metro and pushing east. Uh, parts of New Orleans East and down through Bell Chase, uh, down through Grand Isle, uh, and continuing again along the border uh, and along that from that I-55 corridor eastward, uh, you know, that's the witching hour for you. So as we get into uh, midnight, you see most of the state's clear. And you know, this is going to be 24 hours from now, uh, or 23 hours pretty much, uh, 22 hours rather. And so it, it, it's taking its time getting out of the state. But if this actually verifies, then just a few little spotty showers remaining, you know, across the area. But for the most part, everybody's going to be able to get outside and... and do their thing, albeit it's going to be wet, and 
that might pose a problem lighting these things off but with everything wet nothing can start a fire so again let's go ahead and punch this forward again and then you see uh, as we get into 1 30 in the morning uh, basically cleared the state except for down here Empire Port Sulphur Pilot Town Venice uh, you're still in the mix there and two o'clock you know now we're getting 24 hours from now and it's taking its time moving east and finally around 3 a.m. everybody's the, the states in the clear now what I want to do is I'm gonna zoom out here and I'm gonna show you how the the bigger picture of this and you can see the big 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 rotation here around this thing and I kind of wish that this would just cut straight across very slowly uh, across central Louisiana because if you if it did that instead of ejecting north northeast you see all this blue and white hey we'd have snow on New Year's ha diggity damn <laughs> but you know what mother nature says no 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 so Let's put this back into motion again here. <laughs> I'm going to uh, just let you let you look at the future radar here. And you can see the timeline over there on the left side counting up. And you'll see the spin with this as it rotates up and out and through central Texas and then east Texas. And you see that line, that, e that boundary that it ejected. Uh, straight across Louisiana as it does so so and as it ejects north you see where the snow's going so as I've said before over and over no snow And so one other one other thing to note with this is that uh, the pressure gradients are going to be fairly close together. So what that means is that we're going to see some gusty winds well ahead of time. Uh, they'll probably start in the day. In fact, you can see gusts in mid to upper 20s to low 30s at times. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a wind advisory gets posted uh, for parts of the area. So, uh, again, it's going to be breezy today, more so tomorrow on Thursday, as, as this thing uh, gets cranked up and going. And again, I'll reiterate. The conditions are, are, are favorable and ripe. It's a fairly juicy atmosphere. And the more people that can share this and get the message out so other people are aware and can do their planning in advance of this and have a plan ready should a tornado warning be issued for your particular location uh, folks it's no joke you know a tornado only only affects a very small area and inside that polygon you know you, you're only talking about you know a mile wide at best you know within that polygon so if if it turns one way or the other instead of going away from you it may be coming right at you so again respect the polygon I'll be posting those warnings with those polygons in the group and on the page if w one pops off and when I zoom in and you see all those little towns 
if you're in that that polygon that warning polygon don't be shy don't think it's funny get to an interior room I'll, pro I'll probably be live on Twitch TV and you can tune in there or one of the TV stations will m more than likely be live during this uh, if warnings start popping off which it likely will so you know ensure that you're watching from your phone in an interior room with no windows if a warning is issued for your location I cannot stress that enough nobody's gonna think you're you're being foolish and stupid for trying to protect and save your life don't get out there and try and go film because more than likely any if anything spins up it's gonna be rain wrapped you're not gonna see it you're gonna see a wall of rain coming and then the wind hits and you're caught outside it's too late flying debris could punch right through you and gig you like a frog I, I, I scat you not so yes I use the word scat instead of the other s word so y you know use common sense stay away from the windows you don't need to see it coming you'll probably hear it okay and before you hear it you need to be in your safe spot in your home if you're in a mobile home that hallway where no windows are get down on the floor lay down flat or grab a pillow or something or your cushions off your couch put them over you anything you can do to protect your body that is key okay I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I've never got into a safe spot I have back home in Baton Rouge I think it was what uh 2016 or 2015 something like that I had a friend with me at downstairs closet underneath the stairs uh, at a townhouse and at downstairs closet guess where we got and I cracked that door open just enough where I could see my computer on the desk and I had the radar going thankfully the power stayed on but I saw the rotation coming I saw the couplet very tight rotation and had looked like it had a, a, a debris signature with it and that and what I was hearing outside that was my signal get to the safe spot so uh, I guess as we get older we tend to use more common sense a lot of young people don't but again I reiterate severe weather safety I told y'all this was coming once we got out of hurricane season we went from that right into a fall and winter uh, early winter severe weather season and this is going to continue and it'll, it'll abate a little bit as we get into the colder parts of winter and then we start our spring severe weather season that's the first season spring is the second summer is the third hurricanes the fourth fall is the sixth so uh, you know basically we, we have seven seasons you know that's what I call it we have seven seasons I'll, although we don't get the changing of the colors on the leaves in the fall like they do up north unfortunately so I, again you know I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and ad lib a whole lot I'm just I'm trying to stress you know good safety practices you know protect life and property you know we have enough issues 
outside of everything else going on in the world today you know let's get through this safely heed the warnings when they're issued be prepared be ready I don't want to see no injuries and certainly no deaths out of this one um, that's key I never want to see any, any casualties deaths fatalities or otherwise and unfortunately they sometimes do occur and the more people that are aware hopefully they'll take heed of the warning and you know do their best to, to try and be safe and that's to keep be safe so with that I'm gonna go ahead and close it out and we'll stop this here and we're clear and we're gonna go back to regular radar a little bit of snow up there in Amarillo so actually let me switch back to Merms and that's not really showing any uh, any snow on it unfortunately so maybe a little bit uh, Let's move in here. So the reflectivity is a little bit lower, but uh, we can switch back to national radar. So, anyways, there it is. It's setting up, and we'll see what happens uh, moving forward. Uh, around 7 to 8 a.m., Storm Prediction Center probably have another update or later in the morning uh, once once the morning soundings of the weather balloons are released uh, to each of the National Weather Service forecast offices and once they get that sounding data and is fed into the models uh, and then the new models resolve uh, on their next runs uh, we'll see if they upgrade pull the trigger and upgrade to an enhanced risk um, right now I would say it's borderline 50 50 whether they do pull that trigger or not but we'll see so again this has the potential to be you know fairly nasty and you know I don't usually hype something unless it needs to be hyped and then it's not really hyping it's trying to raise that, uh, raise that awareness level uh, to get it through because some people have really thick skulls and that's the ones I'm trying to reach uh, a lot of you that follow me you heed the polygons you heed the heads up and the early advance notice and you're, you're, you're prepared as best you can and knowing that makes me feel appreciated all that much more so and, and you saw that I posted the, the Lake Charles weather briefing video uh, on the page in the groups and I missed it by about two hours because I was doing something else and uh, I went back and watched it, and as I'm watching it, I'm hearing Donald, Donald, Donald Jones basically say the same thing, almost verbatim what I was saying in that you know morning forecast that I put out, the video forecast, and uh, you know I was like, you know, it's good that I'm on the same page as these guys. It shows that, you know where where my skill level <laughs> and my knowledge is you know in comparison to them you know I'm up at that level you know and, and that's because I never stop learning and you know regardless you know Comet MedEd they have these online courses that I take 
and some of them are very very technical and they're not for the layman and most people will not pass those tests even though I, I tell people to try and get in there and, and educate yourself a lot of people you know it's just too far beyond their, their ability uh, because they haven't been to any classes taken any you know atmospheric science classes so you know that's the key I may be disabled but as long as my brain still functions and I can use my computer to a certain degree I'm steadily learning educating myself and you know atmospheric science is a passion for me always has been second only to aviation so uh, with that I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and uh, watch this and by the time most of you start watching it I'll probably be flirting with the Sandman and tell him to come put the sand in my eyes because I will be out like a light so have a good night y'all and we'll talk to you again uh, later today on Wednesday that's it for now thanks for watching and be sure to hit that thumbs up smash it share and subscribe as for the YouTube on the pages like and share so you smash that thumbs up or that heart uh, show Facebook that you love the post get that that positive vibe going with the algorithms and that shows that they need to pay attention to what we're posting and we potentially reach more people and getting the word out to as many people as possible so that they're aware and can be ready to act that's the key that's what I want I don't care if we only had five followers you know the point is getting the word out to help protect lives and property so with that have a good night we'll talk to you tomorrow well today so for me it'll be tomorrow because I haven't been asleep yet so have a good night folks we'll talk to you in the morning